everybody, welcome to the show. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Raising A to Z. It is an informational and inspirational YouTube channel all about homeschooling. My name is Amanda, a teacher turned homeschool mom. And today we're talking about board games. More specifically, we're talking about game schooling. Before we even start, what is game schooling? So game schooling is the concept that kids learn best when they're having fun. When they are playing and, and in, engaged in something that is not necessarily a strict lesson, kids tend to have a lot more learning experiences. There tends to be a lot more authentic learning that happens. It's also kind of based off the idea that um, there's this interesting quote um, I'll find the reference for it. That kids who, in order to learn something, you need 400 repetitions of that activity or that information before it becomes learning. Unless you're playing, in which it only takes like 10 to 40 times that you need to have that repetition happen. There's so much that can be said about kids learning through authentic, natural play. And a great way to include more play in your learning is through board games. And so, a lot of, uh, especially homeschool families, like to include board games in kind of their regular routine because it's such a great way to incorporate something that is fun and exciting, but it's also like there's learning that's happening, right? And so game schooling is specifically kind of a, not that it's a homeschooling um, approach because I don't think you can teach everything through game schooling, like that would be very, very difficult. Um, but it's a way of like incorporating more fun and more games into your, your your basic learning. The great thing about board games, games in particular, is because you learn so much from actually just playing a game. So regardless of what game it is, even when it's boring games like Candyland, because kids love playing Candyland and it's a really boring game because nothing happens. Really, you're just spinning the dice and hoping you're spinning the spinner and hoping you get to the end before the other people. Even when you're playing games like that, there's still learning that's happening. So we're learning things about counting. We're learning things about color. We're learning things about taking turns, cooperation, good sportsmanship, um, competition. Like there's lots of things that happen in a game, even when it's not an educational game. So just playing board games in general is a great thing to incorporate into your your homeschooling or into your family life. We try to do game night on Friday nights as part of our like fun day Friday. I'll have a link to that video up here. But basically we try to play some kind of game. In the winter, we kind of alternate between board games and video games. In the summer, if we're not swimming, we're usually playing a board game. It's just kind of the way we, we flow with things. We love to play board games because it does teach those basic things of taking turns, following an order. And then once you get into like learning new games, you're talking about reading, following directions. Um, there's a lot of reading comprehension that gets into that. And then it's also things like, you know, planning, skills, organization. There's all kinds of things that happen when you're talking about playing a specific board game. Now, game schooling is a little bit different from board games because you're not just picking up a game and playing it. There's often an educational component behind the game. I think it's also a really important thing to say that I find there's kind of like different levels of games. I think this is something that a lot of people, especially as I'm like, we play more games, we look at getting games more often. I find it hard. Um, I've realized a few things about buying board games, which I think is important. There's kind of different levels. There's kind of like your preschool level games, which are gonna be uh, for kids kind of like four and five, six and under. They're very, very simple games. Um, as a parent, they're a little bit tedious to play. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but they're very, very simple games. There's kind of that category. Then once your kids kind of hit like this six year old mark, you kind of get into like what we consider family games. So you're gonna get into like um, ages six to like 10, six to 12, you're gonna get into like different kind of classic games, um, but there's they're more of a family approach. Then you have like adult games, which are going to be like, you need to have kind of be older than, you know, 10 or 12 to play and to play well. So there's kind of like three categories of games. And sometimes you will have games that have like a junior version. So our kids are quite young. Alexi is only six, Zoe's only four. Alexi loves board games though. Let me tell you, this kid loves to play a good board game. She is all down for it. She's quite good at them. She routinely beats us. Um, even when we're trying. So um, she loves a board game. Zoe's not quite there. Zoe will play with us. She likes to play on a team with an adult. 
um, but she's just not there. She doesn't have the, the mental capacity to keep up with a game that's a longer game, anything that's kind of more than like five or 10 minutes, she's kind of over it. And if it has too many rules, it gets difficult for her. There are some games here that I'm gonna suggest that are definitely great preschool games. And then there's gonna be some games that um, are gonna definitely be for kind of your slightly older kids. Um, maybe when the kids are a little bit older, I will do another video on some of the games that we like as they get older. But for right now, for kids, these are the games that like my kids actively play with us and actually really love. So I think I'm gonna start with the preschool game. So the games that Zoe plays and can play well. The first game on my list is the Sneaky Snacky Squirrel game. So this was a gift that was a game that was gifted to us. It says for ages three and up, two to four players. Basically you have, you have a little squirrel and he's trying to collect all these different colors of acorns in his tree stump and you collect them by spinning the wheel. It's a very simple game. It's fun. It's not overly tedious as a parent to play and the kids really enjoy it. So it's a great game for learning colors, for learning kind of the basics of playing a game, taking turns. There is a little bit of, um, you can steal acorns, you can knock acorns out of other people's trees. So there are different kind of things where you have to kind of learn a little bit of strategy of like, okay, looking at the board, looking at who's playing, who has the most acorns, who should I steal from, who's, because you have to collect all the colors to win. So there is a little bit of strategy. It's a great concept game for introducing kind of gameplay and those kind of strategies. And um, yeah, it is a really, like I said, it's not overly tedious as a parent to play with your kids because you're probably gonna have to play with them. Um, but it's a, also a really nice hands-on game. So you, you have to pick up all the pieces. There's a lot of like hands-on-ness to the game. And so I think this is a great preschool game. Another game that we play with uh, Zoe, and Alexi, actually Alexi loves this game. It's probably one of her favorite games in the entire world, but it is also a game that Zoe can play. It's sure, it's for kids. This is such a fun game. It is not crazily complicated. There is a version where it is just pictures. So I will show you the cards, but this is a great game for introducing for kids who can't really sit still because they get to get up and move, right? So it's fantastic. I can get the lid off and I'll show you. There is like a, an older version of the game for older kids like you can always dumb it down where they have to roll the dice um, and it tells you which of the because it has three options you could play with when we play zoe we just constantly pick up um we just use the picture which is great because it makes it great for non-readers so if you have kids who aren't reading who don't know how to read who are just start struggling this is a great game for them to play because they don't have to feel like they don't know how to play they can easily just play for the uh, the different pictures that are in the cards. It, like I said, great game for getting kids up and moving. It is a team game, which is great for like teamwork and team building. It is also um, an awesome drama game. So there's a lot about like expression and movement and identifying uh, movements in different people and repetitive movements. And so it is a fantastic game for younger kids, but like I said, it easily adapts to older kids and it's a lot of fun. Again, a game that is not tedious or boring as a parent because it is just, you never know what your kids are gonna do and it is always just, it's just a lot of fun. And like I said, this is a game that Zoe can play quite easily, but it's also a game that like Alexi loves. It's her, probably one of her favorite games. So great game for preschoolers or younger kids, but also it's just fun for everybody. Another game that we love to play with our preschoolers is Go Fish. Now this particular deck of Go Fish cards is a alphabet deck where you are matching the upper and lower case letters to make your pairs. So it's not like identical matching. Um, but we love it. It is a great way to incorporate literacy and language skills into a game. It's also great for kids who are struggling with their letters or to practice their letters or to practice making the matches, the different sounds. And this is just a like a fantastic game. Now I would, I will put a link to all the games um, down below. This one, I will put a link to the closest version I can find. I've had these cards. I want to say like 15 years. Like this was a deck of cards that I used to use when I was tutoring in like 
high school first year of university kind of thing so um but i will i'll put a link for something very very similar we love this we play go fish probably once a week at least um because it's a short game it's not overly long it's easy to play it's the kids can either match the sounds they can match the letters um and then they also have the animals which makes it feel not overly intimidating for them if they don't know what letter it is they can often figure out what animal it is and so it kind of gives them a little bit more confidence when they're playing especially if they're struggling with their letters or their letter sounds like i said we play this at least once a week zoe likes to play it so does alexi alexi is very competitive about her go fish so and it's teaching a lot of skills that you don't necessarily think of so for example there is a lot of like planning when it comes to go fish because you're also paying attention to who has what in their hands so if someone says hey do you have a c for cow i'm like no i don't but alexi's sitting there going like okay so i have a cow and she just asked for it so she must have it so there's a lot of like thinking and planning that goes into go fish it's a little bit more strategic than you think it is, um, but it is a great game that we love with our preschoolers. Another game that we love to play with our preschoolers, preschool age kids, Uno. So basically it's kind of an upper preschool age game. It says on the box it's ages seven and up. Um, Zoe's been playing this since she was just like three, three and a half. So again, very simple game. Yeah, this is a mini deck. Um, but you're matching colors, you're matching numbers, and then you're also match like doing the different pick up four cards. There's the reverse, there's the wild cards, there's the pick up twos. There's a lot of different um, cards that go into an Uno deck. And so it's a lot of fun for the kids to play, but it's a great game for kids to practice numbers. So identifying um, the shape of numbers, basic numbers one through 10, um, it's, and colors it's a, it's very simple like i said it says ages seven and up my kids have been able to play both of them have been able to play this since they're about three it is also a great game like this is often a game when stefan takes them on like daddy daughter dates to the coffee shop this is often a game he takes with them because it's a quick game it's you can do a game in about 10 minutes um and then if they don't want to play they move on um but it's also very like portable it's not a lot of pieces it's easy it's compact it's a fantastic like portable game to take with you so definitely a game i recommend for, for the whole family and again not boring as an adult so, like stefan and i will on a date night occasionally play uno like i played uno with my parents like we play uno so it's it's not a boring game to play either all right so those are kind of my favorite preschool games another game that i don't have in my possession uh, another game that we play, oh, the kids really like playing, is Sequence. Sequence, um, my parents have Sequence, and they have Sequence Upper Adult and Sequence Junior, which is kind of like a kid version of it, um, with Jesus animals instead of cards. Both my kids love playing Sequence Junior. They can both play it very easily. It's a lot of matching. There's some like strategy involved with it, um, figuring out what you're going to keep, what you're going to put down, what are you going to like draw it's a very fun game both my kids really really enjoy it and the skills are completely transferable to the old to the like regular sequence game but it's just a bigger game and it uses a deck of cards instead of like the animal cards that come with the sequence junior it is a really fun game my kids both really enjoy it the reason i don't have it is because it's at my parents um they have purchased the game they play the game at their house and so it keeps the game fresh because it is a game that grammy has so we have a couple games like that that are at you know we didn't purchase them my parents have them they're at their house and that is just a game that is played at grammy's we do the same thing with games that are played over at memory's house so the kids have different variety of games at different places and so it kind of keeps the game fresh if we need a specific game for a specific activity we'll definitely borrow it but it's kind of nice to have like games at different places that are different for them so that we're not playing the same games all the time moving on to kind of the junior level games the games that uh, are like alexi level that zoe plays but with assistance and um sometimes gets bored with and leaves halfway through but it's definitely games that she probably in the next year or two will definitely like jump into first off we have scrabble junior i think we can all agree scrabble is a super educational game it is all about letters and spelling and literacy and language and it is just fantastic the reason why i love scrabble junior is because it is great for kids who are not spellers yet who don't have huge vocabularies who can't definitely come up with all of the words to get like the bonus points and the triple word score and all of that like that's very confusing for kids this game is very simple 
for children to play because they are matching letters. So this is the typical Scrabble board. Um, and so as you pick up your tiles, you're playing them and trying to match the letters to finish the word. And every time you finish a word, you get a point and whoever gets around gets the most points by the end of the game wins. It is great for, like I said, younger kids who are just learning to spell, who are just learning the letters, we're matching letters, we're making letter sounds, we're finishing words, we're identifying words, it's super great. The reason why I especially love the Scrabble Junior version is because you can turn it around and it becomes a regular Scrabble board. It is definitely a game that can grow with them and work on those skills in different ways as they grow older. So that's what I love about it. You can definitely pick this up and it becomes a game you can play for many, many years to come. I would say it says ages five and up. But I think that's a pretty accurate um, age bracket for this game. Zoe can play with assistance at her age. She's just four now. She usually pairs up with either myself or Stefan, but she's going to probably be able to start playing it very, very soon on her own. She just needs help learning some letters, a few more letters. By age five, I think she would be very easily able to play this by herself. So great game for kind of your ages five and up, like I suggest. Another great game that we play is Monopoly. I think we all understand how amazing Monopoly is. Um, you have so much math and money that's going on, um, adding, subtracting, counting, money literacy. Like there's just so much going on in Monopoly. It is just hands down a super educational game. We have the Monopoly Junior version. I like this version um, for the kids. We'll probably upgrade to an older version when they're like maybe nine or 10. But this is a great version because it is the same basic principles as Monopoly. It just takes some of the few of the more complicated rules out like mortgaging and interest rates and all that. It takes that out of the game. So they're still buying properties. They're still renting properties. Um, but it's basically just like a buy and rent, buy and rent, buy and rent until you run out of money. It is a lot of fun. The kids really enjoy this game. We play this probably one of our more, our more frequently played games um but yeah it's a lot of fun and it like i said math money skills you really can't beat this game um i always say if you're going to look for a game a monopoly definitely go with the money don't go with the debit card um version because any version that is going to do your digital banking for you you're kind of losing those math skills so if you're looking for educational definitely go with something that has paper money just an FYI. Another game that is new to us that we just got this uh, Christmas is Blockus. Um, I discovered Blockus when I was teaching years ago and I thought for sure we had the game. Apparently I imagined that entire thing. Uh, we do not have the game Blockus. So when it was Christmas and it was time to pick up a new game, um, this is what we picked up. I, we do try to get like one or two new games at Christmas time. It's a great way to kind of combine our homeschooling budget with our Christmas budget. So this was one of our investment pieces. This is a super fun game. It's kind of like Tetris in the fact that you have these little, basically you have a board that is raised, like it's got a texture to it. And then you have all of these little, There's all kinds of little clear acrylic uh, pieces. They're all different shapes. They're all different numbers of squares. And the goal is to put as many of these on the board as possible. And you can have up to four players playing at the same time. It is super fun because you can't have your pieces touch. They have to always be kitty corner. So there's a lot of like spatial awareness that goes into this game. There's a lot of strategy that goes into this game, but it's not overly complicated. Like Zoe doesn't win, but Zoe can kind of play it long and she plays pieces. She, obviously she doesn't win because she doesn't have the strategy. Her brain's just not mature to have that kind of strategy in, in it yet. But like Alexi can play this game quite well. Like she can, she can get into it and she can play it. Um, and it's a lot of fun. Like I enjoy playing Blockus. Like this is a great game for like adults. It recommends ages seven and up. I think if you're looking like Alexi six, she can play it quite well. It's a great game though. It's a very fun game. It's a lot of spatial awareness, a lot of like geometry and shapes and seeing how to get the most shapes on the board with the, within a limited amount of space it is a fantastic game and I highly recommend it. Um, like I said, ages seven and up, two to four players, but it's also, like I said, not a boring game, super fun for adults, great for kids, fantastic game schooling game. So another game we absolutely love that is brand new for us is Pickles to Penguins. This game, oh my goodness, it is a hoot and a half. We have played this, we got it for Christmas. It was another Christmas gift game 
that we picked up this year. It says ages eight and up. Um, it can also be for more than two players. It is super fun, super easy concept. Basically, you have all of these different cards. There's all different things on the cards. There's places, there's food, there's people, there's animals, there's clothing, there's all kinds of different things on the cards and you are trying to make connections between them. So for example, you might have a frog and a clownfish. They both like water. That might be your connection. You might have a wig and the party hat here. They're both purple. Um, you're making connections between the items as they're pictured or as they're used in real life. So it's a very open concept. Like you can make all kinds of connections. It's a lot of critical thinking. It's a lot of making connections in the bigger world. It's a fantastic game. The other great thing about it is not only is there the regular instructions on how to play Pickles and Penguins, which is the basic game, there is also a whole list of alternative games you can play with the same game. So there's what, five here? Yeah, there's five other games you can play with the same deck of cards. So it is a fantastic game. Basically, you're getting six games for the price of one. It is super fun. Like I said, it says ages eight and up for two or more players. I don't think ages eight and up is an accurate age suggestion um, because every time we've played it, Alexi is one and she's six. Like, I mean, every time against multiple adults, she wins this game. So great game, super fun to play for everybody. We just love it. Fantastic game. Another game we picked up recently. I've been waiting for a set of this game to go on sale and it finally did because these games are not particularly inexpensive, right? So this is Domino's. So first off, Domino's is so much fun. There are, are so many basic games you can play within the game itself. So you have your basic, like you have to do your matching, you have your Mexican train. There are some basic Domino games that are included when you buy a pack of Domino's. They are all about numbers, matching, probability, getting rid of your, your points, figuring out your points. Um, like there's so many like mathematical concepts that go into dominoes that is great. The other thing about dominoes is they are probably one of, they're like the Legos of the board game world. I would say like between Legos and a deck of cards, you're looking at like the Legos of the game world in the sense that they are so versatile. Um, if you were to go onto like Google or Pinterest right now and like search uh, educational games using dominoes, you would probably come up with a hundred different games on how to use dominoes for all kinds of things from adding to subtracting to fractions to there'd be so many games that come up using dominoes. So they're just such a versatile game for any homeschool family. A few tips when you're looking at a pack of dominoes, because there's lots of different packs of dominoes. They usually come in doubles. So double is going to have the same, like on the package, it has two of the same. For example, if you have double sixes, there's going to be six, that this is the highest number on your deck is going to be six. Um, usually they come in packs of double sixes, twelve sixes, nines, twelves, and sixteens. I recommend getting at least a double nine, if not higher. Um, this is a double twelves, which is what I was looking for. Sixteen is going to be even bigger, so it's going to have more and more tiles. Um, it just gives you more options. So a double twelves is great because this basically, if I were ever do like multiplication or anything, I can do double twelves, which would be my twelve time tables, right? Um, so that is definitely something you want to think about. Is Sometimes it's better to buy the bigger pack to begin with because sometimes it's very difficult to find expansion packs that, that blend with your pack, right? Because you don't want to have them all look different. Another thing I highly recommend um, is getting the colored dots. Um, it just makes playing a little bit easier. It makes it a little, and then it adds the element of your matching colors. So if you have younger kids who don't, who have a hard time with the counting, definitely it, it makes it a little bit easier. Even as an adult, it does make it easier and better to play. And again, a game that is super fun for everybody. Alexi is able to play it. We've played it a couple times. So like I said, we just, we just, just got it maybe a week ago. She's played it t twice and was able to was able to play. She didn't win, but she was able to play quite easily. But then again, like I love Domino's. Domino's is probably one of my favorite board games ever. And it's a great game for anybody. Like I said, super versatile, lots of options when it comes to games, all from investing in one game. So if you're looking at where to spend the money, this is definitely, this is definitely a great option for anybody. We also have the classic deck of cards. Like I said, 
this is just like a box of dominoes. Um, literally so many games you can play with a basic deck of cards. This one is pretty old, but there's so many games you can play. You can play all the classics, right? Like obviously there's poker and euchre and crazy eights and speed, BS, president. There's all those games. Lexi is just starting to learn crazy eights. Um, we, I'm sure we'll teach her all those games. Her grandmother is a crazy euchre player. She loves to play euchre. And so that'll be a great, um, we'll definitely play cards. I love to play cards as well. Cards are super, super fun. There's so much that goes into them. There's probability, there's math, there's um, addition, subtractions, ordering, value, place values. Like there's so much that's going into learning just when you're playing with a basic deck of cards. And just like dominoes, you can easily, easily go onto Google and search educational games using a deck of cards and you'll come up with probably a thousand different options of games. So if you are like, I don't have anything, I wanna try to start with something, start with a deck of cards. So like I said, you probably pick them up at the dollar store for a buck. They're fun, they're easy, and they just, they're like the workhorse of, of the board game, game schooling family. So definitely, if you don't have anything, definitely get a deck of cards. And then lastly, I don't think it would be complete if I didn't like talk about Battleship. Battleship, uh, this is a very old version because I think this was Stefan's when he was a kid. Um, but it still has all the pieces, so we're gonna use it. Battleship is such a great, it's probably one of the few games that has a very specific mathematical pur purpose. You're learning about grids and it is grids and probability. It is definitely a game that is teaching strategy. It is a fantastic game. If you have little ones like we do, Alexi can play this. She does find the full game long. So typically what we do is we just play with the three biggest boats. We find it makes the game a little bit faster. It gives it a quicker end. Otherwise it's a very long game, but you can't beat teaching grids without Battleship. Like it is the easiest, fastest, best way to teach it. And it's so much fun. It is a great game. Another game that we like to play that, um, again, I don't have in my possession uh, because it is at Meme's house. It is uh, Rummy Cup. So Rummy Cup is a game where you have tiles and you're making groups. So you're always trying to make groups, uh, numbers in order, by color, by number, matching colors. Um, it's all about making groups. And there is a little bit of addition that is required. So it's kind of getting kind of have to be like ages seven or eight. Alexi can play with assistance. It's a little bit too old for Zoe, but it is a very fun game. Like I said, probably in a year or two when Alexi is able to do it like much quicker, she will absolutely jump into it. It is such a fun game to play. It is not a game that is boring for adults. It is definitely a fantastic kind of like upper level um, kid game, but also like it's it kind of borders between like kids and adults, which is really, really nice. Those are our favorite games. Obviously we have other games. Every kid love Jenga. Like we, we play a lot of board games. We play some other games that are not necessarily the most educational, but like I said, there's a lot of things that are learned even when you're talking about games that are not educational. We're talking about taking turns, rolling the dice, counting dice, um, sportsmanship, maybe strategy. There's all kinds of things that go into playing all kinds of games, um, even when they're not the super educational ones. So we do have a few of those. We have Kerplunk, we have Jenga, we have Mousetrap, where the only fun thing about Mousetrap is really just like building the track and then watching it go. Um, but yeah, we really enjoy playing a lot of board games in our house. And so if we can incorporate playing those board games into our homeschooling and into teaching our kids, we're gonna do that. So I hope this gave you some ideas. Like I said, I will drop links to all the board games we have below. If there's one you're interested in, definitely check it out. Maybe you guys wanna try adding a board game to your homeschooling. If you guys have a favorite board game that you and your family just absolutely love, please leave it below. I currently have a running list of board games that I would like to add to our collection over the next few years. And I'm always looking for something to put into the collection, especially with like birthdays and Easter coming up. It's a great kind of option for us. So if you have a game you love, please leave a comment below. That's all I've got for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys want to see us use these board games on a regular basis, you definitely want to make sure you're following us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, where we talk all about what we do on Friday Fridays and family game night and all that kind of stuff. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.